Hello everyone, welcome to our talk, The Probable Security of ED2559 Theory and Practice. Nowadays, one of the most popular digital signature scheme is EDDSA. By virtue of high efficiency, the ED2559 instantiation has been widely deployed in various practical protocols. However, it turns out that the implementations differ substantially and the devil is in the details. Among them, three of the most significant ones are the original ED2559 and its IETF and LibSodium variants. In this talk, we focus on four topics around ED2559. First, we explore the differences between these three implementations the ED2559 original, IETF, and the LibStudium versions, and figure out the impacts of the differences on their security guarantees. The next topic is related to unfortunability. Surprisingly, since the release of ED2559, no proof for unfortunability has ever been given for any ED2559 variant. In our paper, we close this gap by providing the first proof. Moreover, in some applications such as SSH, the underlying ED2519 scheme is even assumed to be strong and forgeable. <clears throat> the third topic in our paper is to investigate the strong and for each of these three variants. Finally, let's have a close look at the resilience to case substitution attacks, which are outside the traditional notions but have great significance for practical usage. Now we start to recall the basic definition of digital signature. Upon assigning key SK and a message M, the signer Alice can execute the signing algorithm to produce a signature sigma and send both message and a signature to the verifier Bob. Upon the corresponding verification key and the transcript received from Alice, Bob is expected to pass this verification by outputting the Boolean value true. In the unfortunability experiments, the signal Alice is simulated by a signing oracle that inputs a message M and outputs a real signature sigma. The adversary if has access to such signing oracle and finally outputs a pair of message and signature. The existential unfortunability on a chosen message attacks, we say unfortunability for short, requires a verification algorithm executed by Bob to output false if the forged message M prime is unequal to any message M that has been queried to the signing oracle. The strong unfortunability requires Bob to reject any forged message signature pair which is unequal to any pair derived from the interaction between Eve and the signing oracle. In particular, Eve can win the strong unfortunability experiment by forging a new signature sigma prime for a message m prime equals m that has already been queried. To investigate the unfortunability of ED2559, we first recall its basic construction. The ED2519 is designed on the twisted Edwards curve, TED2519. Regarding this curve, there are two important points. The one is the point at infinity O, which equals 0 times P for all points P on TED2519. The other is the selected base point B with order L. Here, the order of point B denoted by the absolute value defines the smallest positive integer n such that n times b equals the point at infinity. The ED2519 original consists of three algorithms. The k-generation algorithm inputs public parameter and samples the k with length 256 bits. Next, it derives a 512 bit long value h by applying a hash function to this k. Then, it derives s from the second 256 bits of h and then computes a equals sb. Here, 
This value a is a verification key and the sampled key is the signing key. The signing algorithm imposes a secret KK and a message M. The signer first recomputes the value H and S as in the key generation algorithm. Then it derives a value R from the message M and the first 256 bits of H. Finally, it computes big R equals small r times b and big S equals small r plus hash of big R big A M times S, the modulus L, and outputs big R and big S as signature. The verification algorithm upon verification k A, a message M, a signature sigma, denoted by a pair of R comma S, first checks whether points big R and A both are on the curve TED2519. Next, it checks whether S is 256 bits long. Finally, it checks whether the equation 8 times S times B equals 8 times big R plus 8 times hash of big R, comma A, comma M times A holds. And the output is true if all checks succeed and false otherwise. In our paper, we formally prove that the basic paradigm of ED2519 is unfoldable. This indicates that the original ATF and the libsudim versions all are UFCMA secure. Regarding strong unfoldability, the case becomes different. When query signing oracle on message M for signature R, S, the adversary can forge a new signature upon the same message M by replacing S by S prime, which equals S plus L. It's straightforward that the first and third checks are passed because the point R and A both are honestly generated, and the base point B has order L. Then, the adversary runs if S prime is 256 bits long, which occurs with non-negligible probability, and indicates that ED2519 original is not strong unfortable. However, the IETF and the LibSudium versions additionally involve the bond checking. In addition to the signature validation check, these two versions also ensure the value s in the range from 0 to l-1. Hence, we can observe that ED2519 original differs from IETF and LibSudium versions in bound checking, while the original version checks whether s is 256 bits long. The IETF and LibSudium versions check whether as is in the range from 0 to L-1. The relation between these three variants is depicted in the Venn diagram right side. Consequently, we prove that both IETF and LibSudium versions achieve SUF CMA security, namely strong affordability. Other than classical security notions such as affordability, the key substitution attacks also have great significance, especially in some specific realms, including digital currency and email authentication. Roughly speaking, the key substitution attacks aim to forge a new verification key or a new message that can pass the verification upon some real signatures. A digital signature scheme without resilience to key substitution attacks directly loses the, the non-repudiation property. That is, a user that has signed some message cannot at a later time deny having signed it. In our paper, we introduce three variants. The first one, strong universal exclusive ownership, requires the verification algorithm to output false upon a forged verification key that differs from the original one, a forged message 
and a honestly generated message signature pair. Moreover, we see a signature scheme has message bound signatures if the verification algorithm cannot pass up upon the same verification key and the signature and the two distinct messages output by an adversary. Finally, the malicious strong universal exclusive ownership ensures that no adversary can forge two distinct verification key, VK and VK prime, a signature sigma, two messages M and M prime, such that the verification on VK M sigma and on VK prime M prime sigma both hold. In terms of the case substitution attacks, our first theorem reveals that all these three ED2519 variants have strong universal exclusive ownership. The analysis for message bound signatures is, however, not the case. An adversary can output verification KA, signature R, S, and two messages M and M prime such that the points A and R both are on TED2519, and the positive S is less than L. Then, pass the first and the second checks. Additionally, the point A also has low order 8, which means 8 times A equals the point at infinity O, and further equals 0 times B, and that SB equals R. Then, the third check also succeeds. Therefore, the adversary can win for arbitrary distinct messages M and M prime, which indicates that the IETF version does not have MBS. The Lipsodium variant prevents this attack by low order point checking. In addition to bound checking, the Lipsodium version rejects the points A and R, which have order smaller than L. Now, we can easily find the differences between these three implementations. Compared to ED2509 original, the IETF and the libstudium versions involve bump checking. Namely, the IETF and the libstudium versions check whether the value S is in the range from 0 to L-1. Further, the, the libstudium version additionally involves low-order point checking. Namely, the libstudium version also checks whether the points A and R both have order greater than or equal L. The relation between these three variants is depicted in the Venn diagram right side. Consequently, we prove that the Lipsodium version has message bound signatures. Similarly, we also prove that it achieves malicious strong universal exclusive ownership. In the end, we would like to provide a summary for this talk. We compare the implementations of these three representative variants of ED2519. Besides, we disclose the different security guarantees achieved by these three variants, including unfortunability and resilience to key substitution attacks. Based on these conclusions, we recommend users to choose suitable variants according to their different purpose of usage, and to base their protocols on the suitable security assumptions of their underlying ED2519 variants. That is all of our talk. Thanks for your attention. If you are interested in the details of our work, please read our paper, The Probable Security of ED2519, Theory and Practice.